every woman deserves to feel vibrant, safe, loved, and feel her power. The Woman's Vibrancy Code podcast is here for a potent use of your time. We will cover energy, hormones, and libido with episodes that also dive into entrepreneurship, money mindset, feminine power, and much, much more. Introducing Mariah Brown, Yale and functional medicine trained women's health expert, midwife, mom, and entrepreneur. Hello, everyone. Mariah Brown here, women's health online expert. So what I want to talk about today is irritability, anxiety, and my miscarriage. And you might seem like, "Mm, wait, does that really relate? I promise it does. So here we go. Let's see what we can create. But I really do appreciate everyone that's here and chiming in and curious and leaning into this topic of irritability, anxiety. And yes, I will tell my story of a miscarriage and how it's all related because they really are for me. The thing that I want to start with is to remind each and every one of us that life is happening either by me or for me, but not to me. And every setback is the set up, okay? And so hopefully as you're listening to this, you can listen through that lens of whatever struggle you are currently in the midst of, whatever struggle has been part of your past, whatever trauma has been part of your past. If you can drop into the place of trust that every setback is the set up and we are not victims here, life is not happening to us. It is happening either for us or by us. So what I wanna talk about First is about seven years ago, I had just given birth to number two and I was a new mom and I was also busy running businesses. And my firstborn was less than two years old at the time. And he did not sleep for more than an hour until he was 18 months old. And I had continued to grin and bear it and white knuckle it as a new mom I did everything that I could to try to figure out in the midst of colic. And here I was now with two young children and recovering postpartum. And I was really, really tired. And it's so fascinating to me that when I look back at that chapter of my life, what did I do about it? Really, I did nothing. I continued to work. I continued to serve. I continued to work as a women's health provider. And I had studied nutrition for more than a decade. And so I was great at caring for everyone else and saved table scraps for myself. And in the midst of it, I was so tired that I remember my husband came home like two o'clock in the afternoon and I was sitting on the back steps trying to keep my children entertained. And I looked up at him and I was so tired. I said, I feel like something is really wrong, like I'm dying, okay? Now, also at that same time, I was struggling with really intense irritability. I had lost my libido. I didn't want to be touched. And I felt kind of angry at the world. And yet, once again, I didn't reach out for myself. And it wasn't until my newborn needed some support and I found a naturopath that would come to the house to come see her. And she looked at me and she said, how are you doing? And I said, well, I'm kind of tired, but I'm okay. And luckily, she saw through the lines and she said, why don't we get you a checkup too? And come to find out, my thyroid had crashed and my adrenals had crashed. And luckily, I was seeing a naturopath and she had ordered the right tests to look at my thyroid. And I didn't really exactly know what that meant, that my adrenals had crashed. And so that was seven years ago. It obviously took me on a whole trajectory of figuring out how to heal my own thyroid and adrenals, but also as a women's health provider. I want to learn this stuff because I want to turn my sorrow into my triumph. I want to turn my lessons into something that I can teach and I can impact a lot of women around the world and a lot of patients. And so slowly over time, I went from lots of aches and pains in my body, severe irritability, no libido, feeling trapped in my body, feeling lost in my career, over-serving, and slowly but surely. I can say now today that the irritability is gone, the body aches and pains are gone. I don't get exhausted at the end of the day, although today I'm slightly tired, but I traveled for 21 hours and I'm dealing with jet lag and I've got three kids at home. But at the same time, I do a lot in a normal day and 
I don't struggle with brain fog. I don't struggle with fatigue. But what I can tell you is I hear from a lot of women that do. And they come to me saying that they're waking up tired no matter how much they sleep. They're having the afternoon slump. They're exhausted in the evening. They're having a really disrupted sleep, right? They're having pronounced irritability, especially during their PMS week. And a lot of women saying, I've gone to my healthcare provider and I'm either told my labs are normal or here's a prescription. And they're saying that's not my solution. And that wasn't my solution either. I will say I did go on levothyroxine initially and I've slowly, slowly titrated that dose down. And I'm now to the very smallest dose and I cut it in half. And truth be told, for some reason, I'm not yet ready to take the final leap to go completely off. Ask me again in six months and <laughs> probably share why I'll figure that out. But then my adrenals, I think that they have really significantly recovered. And what I can tell you is now I have three children. And so what's interesting is between that baby number two and baby number three, yes, I went on this deep dive of self-discovery and healing. Yes, I then turned that into teaching others because I was running the women's health at a local family practice, functional medicine practice. But I was still working too many hours. I still felt like the pressure of the world was on my shoulders and I was still over giving. And I think a lot of women can really relate to this. We serve, we give, right? There's a lot of people that we care for each and every day. Our children, our partners, our neighbors, our community members, our family members, whatever it may be. And we often don't prioritize ourselves. Or if we do, there's some sense of guilt around it. If we go back to 2011, I was pregnant with my first pregnancy. At that point, I was living and working in Hawaii. I was newly married and we were pregnant with our first baby. And one of my dear friends who was also a midwife in Alaska had asked me to come up and work up there for a few months and take the place of a different midwife that was on maternity leave. And my husband and I were like, yeah, how great would that be? We could go up to Alaska. We've always wanted to see it. We'll rent out our house in Hawaii. I was 13 weeks pregnant. We would get great prenatal care. I had never really worked truly, truly in a practice that was birthing center and home birth. Most of my experience had been either running the women's health at federally funded clinics or attending hospital births. I mean, I had attended birthing center and home births in Nicaragua and Haiti and, and Ghana and a little bit throughout the U.S. But anyway. We came to Oregon and we bought a car and we drove the Alcan Highway up to get to Canada. And like I said, I was 13 weeks pregnant. And in the middle of nowhere, like one of the most remote places I've been in my life in the middle of Canada while camping, I started cramping and I started bleeding. And I remember I was in the bathroom at the campground and there was a woman who was French and I was sitting on the toilet and I said to her through the stall, you know, this is the campsite. Can you go tell my husband that I'm um, having a miscarriage? And so she went and found him and brought him outside the women's bathroom. And I think he carried me. I don't remember, but packed up the tent. So this is kind of an intense story. And I'm going to actually tell my miscarriage story now. So if this is triggering for you, I'm just giving you that warning. But this is real. And the reason I want to tell it is. Afterwards, although I had been a midwife for a long time at this point, I had no idea how common miscarriages were. And after the miscarriage, stories came through the woodworks. Is that the saying? And people told me their stories of their miscarriage. And I had no idea, friends and aunties and grandmothers and mothers. And what I realized that I bet you about 80% of women have a miscarriage at some point in their life, but nobody ever knows about it because we often don't tell anyone in first trimester. And if we do have the miscarriage, we do it on our own and we go right back to work. There's not necessarily a funeral or a celebration of life. And so part of this, every setback is the set up and life is not happening to us. It's happening for us or by us. So anyway, just as a heads up, I'm going to talk about my miscarriage a little bit. So I said I wanted hot water. And so we loaded in the car and we had about an hour drive to the nearest town. And my husband was able to find a hotel room that would rent to us by the hour. And I remember being in the bathtub and I remember seeing, you know, like when you see oil and water, how it mixes together with every contraction, seeing little bits of blood and how it 
was mixing with the water. And I had my midwifery bag with me. So I remember in between contractions telling my husband, if I hemorrhage, this is what you need to do. And I mean, just like horrible, horrible. And here we were, future parents preparing the morning of the loss of a baby. And at the same time, in the middle of nowhere, having to show up as our own healthcare providers. And I think that's enough of that piece. <laughs> I don't need to go into too many details. But when it was all done, we wrapped that beautiful baby in a, in a cloth and we had to get right on the road because we already had a boat booked from Skagway to Juneau and we had to get on the road. And it was devastating. It was sad. I was cramping. I was uncomfortable. And we were at a loss and we were mourning. And when we arrived in Juneau, they said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, but we made a mistake on your contract and we actually don't have work for you. And that $10,000 we were going to reimburse you for your move, we're actually not going to reimburse you. So we literally found ourselves jobless, homeless, uninsured, no longer pregnant, with an extra $10,000 debt, our house in Hawaii rented out, and oh, by the way, we had our dog with us. It was devastating. And I crashed. I crashed in a really big, hard way. I became very sad for a good three months. And, you know, there were some family members that were, didn't understand and come on, snap out of it, move on with your life. And I just felt like I'm still mourning and I'm really sad. And so the reason I tell that story in this context is fast forward to 2017, where now I have three children and I finally have this clarity of, oh, I can offer my gifts in the world. I can offer my craft out in the world by creating an online course. But I found myself debilitated by fear to take a leap. Because what I realized is there was seven or more years of feeling like, what if we hadn't gone to Alaska? Is there something that I missed? Is there something that I did wrong that the miscarriage wouldn't have happened? I was a healthcare provider. Why didn't I see it coming? And so in the place and the context of having the opportunity to take a leap into entrepreneurship, I was really afraid. I was afraid of taking a risk. I was afraid of what if it all comes crashing down? I had three children now that I was caring for. And yet I knew that I was irritable and unhappy, feeling trapped in my life and my marriage and my body. And part of it was because I wasn't prioritizing myself and I wasn't doing what brought my heart on fire. And so I found a good mindset coach <laughs> and I found a good healthcare provider and I found a good business coach and I found some people that believed in me and I started taking steps. Was I afraid? Yes. Did it feel debilitating at times? Yes. Did it feel like the pressure of the world was on my shoulders? Yes. Did I let that stop me? No. Did I have a vision and a hunger? Yes. And I took the leap and I started prioritizing me because what I realized is I don't know if my marriage is going to last, but I know that I still have a relationship with me. And thank goodness my marriage has still lasted. And we've, you know, he proposed on our first date, January of 2007, and we're happier now than ever. But even if it hadn't lasted at that point, I knew that we were still going to be co-parenting our children. So I still had to start addressing who I was and who I was showing up as. And I had to get to the bottom of my irritability and whatever was happening in my body and why the libido was gone. And what I say is we need to feel as women, we need to feel turned on by our life, our lover and ourselves. And I don't think we get to separate them out. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? And so as I came alive, getting into my zone of genius, doing what I love to do, voila, there came my libido. There went away my irritability. Now, I will say part of the irritability, it's not that it's gone completely because we as women aren't supposed to be the same every day. I don't think we're meant to do the nine to five, always social and calm and creative and there to serve. There are weeks in a 28 day period. And if you listen, I think it's episode 11, where I talk about a 28 day cycle. There are weeks where we're not as social. There's weeks that we are more irritable. There are weeks where we feel more alive and more sexy and people gravitate to us, right? That's the quantum. Woo. 
and we're dynamic beings, we're ever changing beings. And so as I started tracking and really doing a deep dive into seeing how different I am based on each week of a 28 day cycle, while also prioritizing myself, filling up my own cup, continuing the journey of finding the right providers that ordered the right tests, continuing the journey of making sure that I was getting personalized nutrition and supplementation for me. Okay. You'll hear from me. Some people say keto or paleo or intermittent fasting. I don't think there's one way for everyone. Some people are big on eating for your genetics. I think that our genome, our genetics load the gun, but it's our lifestyle that triggers it. I don't think there's one way. It's not just labs that define who you are. It's your life and what you're eating and how you're eating it and what thought forms come out of your brain and what you allow in and out of your eyes and your heart. For any of you that are in my space, you know this, that I say this often. And so has the irritability gone away completely? No. Is there more self-awareness? Yes. Is it less pronounced? Yes. Okay. Now I said that for this, I was going to talk about irritability, anxiety, and my story of miscarriage. So I haven't really touched on anxiety. Anxiety is not necessarily part of my story but it is part of many of your stories that are here listening in and you're leaning into this and still listening to this because there's part of you that feel heard or seen. Maybe you notice pronounced irritability during your PMS week. Maybe you have aches and pains in your body. Maybe you're exhausted. Maybe you do struggle with depression or anxiety or you have a hard time going to sleep, staying to sleep, whatever that may be. It's all very real. And what I want to say is most important is just because it's common doesn't mean it's normal. And it's your job, and it was my job, to be our own self-advocates. And if you've gone to a provider and you've said, here's what's going on for me, and you're not getting the solutions that you're looking for, you're not feeling really heard or seen, and you're still really struggling, say, with anxiety, what I want to say is you get to speak your voice. You get to continue to search out for other solutions. I think we're a complicated puzzle. And sometimes it just means finding that last puzzle piece that fits in there, right? to get that person, that support system that's going to offer you the accountability and the support so you can really get personalized supplementation. And in the anxiety conversation, maybe it's the caffeine. Maybe you need to kind of let the caffeine go. Maybe what we need to do is really address your sleep. Maybe it's the spinning mind, the spinning thoughts which are then affecting your adrenals. Maybe it is the genetics. Maybe it's your methylation. I don't know. And if it's your irritability or if it's your exhaustion, it's about finding someone that looks at you as a beautiful, multifaceted, ever-changing being. And that's why for me now, I have the opportunity to have an amazing program with a multidisciplinary team and a podcast and growing presence in social media, right? So when we have with women that come into my inner infrastructure, they're getting support from me, as well as a mindset coach, a trauma release specialist, a sexologist, and a functional dietitian. So you get to feel caught and held in a multidisciplinary team that are going to see you in the complexities of all that you are. And for me, that's what made the world of difference. Because as I got the support and mindset, and I had to look at my worthiness as I launched my first course. And I had to look at my fear of taking a leap. And what if it all comes crashing and feel my sadness from that miscarriage so many years ago, and also celebrate the three beautiful children that I have now in a marriage that's still standing strong and only getting better. Am I glad I took the leap? Heck yeah, I'm glad I took the leap. Now, this past July, I'm recording this in, what are we? We're in May. This past July, I got to retire my husband home and he's now working as the CFO and the stay at home dad. And we are like fully doing this as a team and we're navigating different roles within our relationship. And I get to then go, oh my gosh, what does this look like for me to be the breadwinner, but also step into my feminine and my flow and my receiving space in the midst of our relationships. And sometimes the irritability or the anger or the fear come rearing their nasty heads. And I get to be in that space of curiosity and go, all right, Mariah, life is not happening to me. It's happening for me or by me. Let's drop down, look at what am I letting in and out of my eyes? What am I allowing in and out of my heart? What am I allowing in and out of my mouth? Can I think back to 
the perspective of what the other individual, what he might be going through. And what I can tell you is, at least for me, the journey of irritability is pretty much gone. The feeling of being trapped in my life, my marriage, and my body, gone. And the women that I work with over time, their version of this story becomes a story of triumph. So this is a different one for the podcast, for those that are listening. It's less around nitty gritty solutions. And I wanted to share more around my story and more around hope, right? So I get to use my mess to become my message. And I get to highlight the times in my life where life came crashing down And I can look at now how much more compassion and empathy it's allowed me and gifted me with those that I serve. It gives me so much more appreciation for the ways in which in my marriage we've navigated really hard times. And I feel forever grateful for the three healthy children that I have. So for you, if you are struggling with irritability or anxiety or you've had a miscarriage or you're feeling like you're at a place in your life where life is coming crashing down. I just want to give you the story to say the one constant is change. Okay. This too shall change. And on the other side, you get to turn this chapter of your life into your triumph. You will at some point use this to teach someone else, support someone else. And I hope that where you start is by really prioritizing yourself, allowing yourself to receive support, right? That support might come from me. You're welcome to reach out to me and learn more about the work that I do, come and enroll in the next Vibrant Life Workshop. Would love, love, love to have you. So you can really get some answers, your personalized roadmap to your energy, your hormones, your libido, and to feel held, to feel seen, and to realize there's all these women in the world that are going through their version of it. And we get to come together and really talk about this and really support one another. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting. And if you're listening in the podcast, cheers to the Women's Vibrancy Code. I obviously always appreciate a five-star review and anything that you'd like to write. And in the meantime, cheers to all women moving from exhausted to energized, balancing their hormones and feeling turned on by their life, their lover, and themselves. And ta-ta for now. Thank you for listening to the Woman's Vibrancy Code. Connect with us and take the first step to transforming your energy, hormones, and libido at thewomansvibrancycode.com. Cheers to your zest and vitality. Make sure to follow for weekly power-packed value.